Hey guys, my name is Bryce from Aero Response. Today we've got Kean from Flight Technologies, yeah. and today we're going to do a review on the Matrice 14. Now, it's a massive upgrade on the Mavic 3 Enterprise thermal series. So we've got three different cameras here now. One of the big limitations on the previous one was that you'd have a wide camera and then one at 7x, yep. whereas this one gives you another camera at the full 48 megapixels at the 3x. So you're getting that continuous full resolution across yep. that zoom range. Yep. Um, also better hybrid zoom as well, yep. and uh, being IR sensitive. So in those low light conditions, being able to get much better performance when you're doing search and rescue, ISR. Yeah, or that'll be huge for search and rescue, absolutely. Which means you're not always gonna need to run a payload with spotlights or anything like that. You can pretty much just use the camera, but obviously the search and rescue spotlight and the speaker which we've got on here is obviously going to make a big difference for you. Yeah, and I think this is a nice upgrade as well. Like Absolutely. You've played with the one on the 30. But yep. So with this one, you can have the speaker directly connected without the lights, yep. or you can have the lights and the speaker. Yeah, okay. The nice thing as well is because they've integrated the RTK module into it, yep. it actually means that you can have RTK, there's a 4G SIM already built into this as well, yep. and then you have your payload. Yeah, so right. if you want to run parachutes or anything for yep. operations over near people, perfect for it redundancy. Really opens Absolutely. it up completely, yeah. right? Which not... is important for safety, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. The first thing we've got to the left is the DJI Plus One controller, which is used for the M300 series and the M30T. To the right is the new DJI M4T DJI Plus 2 controller. We've got a more compact screen, and we've also now got backlit buttons on the L3, sorry, L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, R3. On the top of the DJI Plus 1 controller, we've got four slots at the top, which is your HDMI, your USB-A, USB-C, and micro SD. They've now changed it with the RC Plus 2 controller, where you've got the HDMI and the USB-A on the top, and now we have micro SD and the USB-C on the bottom. You still have the same channels, same scrolls and normal controls that you'd know from the RC Plus One. So we've talked about the things that you can pretty much see off the bat. What else are you getting from the RC Plus Two controller? Yeah, so the RC uh, Plus Two now uses OcuSync 4, so that's good out to 15 kilometers in FCC. So obviously giving yeah, well. you more robust communication, just yeah. reliability in those harsher environments. Uh, we still get some of the nice features in the back, so being able to add uh, the 4G LTE module and also use the W37 extendable battery yep, so yep, you can yep. have all day operation, yep. keep these on charge. But other than that, it's really just an update on what we've seen in the great performance out of the RC Plus One. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so we still do have the same weather rating. The controller is still designed to be used in those harsh environments. We have the covered gimbal joysticks, sealed buttons, sealed back on the canopy, uh, canopy and all the uh, connectors here have their covers as well. Yep. So really maintaining that ability to go and deploy in those environments that we need to. Absolutely. So the Matrice 4 series here uses these high capacity 4S lithium batteries. Uh, so one of the nice things about this system is the batteries are actually 99.5 watt hours. Meaning you can take a reasonable amount with them with you on carry on on a flight. So that means it's much mm. easier to transport than a 30 or a 350. It yeah. means you can get out to those locations when you need to. Yeah, where you got to ship batteries or have something in yeah. reserve, so that's great. So the first thing we've got on the screen, we've currently got the aircraft and meter in the air just hovering. On the bottom left, we've got the downward facing camera. So another great thing about this, while you're using the main camera, which is on the bottom right, um, we can actually select what obstacle avoidance cameras and we can cycle them. Should we want a fixed view of what the aircraft sees while we're focused on the main camera? So on the bottom left, we've got the map and on the bottom right, we can just open that at any time. We can press the two down arrows to look at the bottom or we can cycle around the aircraft. This is pretty much a fixed camera, should you need a reference or a point of view when you're looking at the main camera. We've currently got it sitting at about 32 meters. So we can see there's a fair bit going on here now with the user interface. It looks like we've got a fair new, fair few functions that we don't have from some of the other drones. Do you mind explaining some of these? And Yeah, so going that? through here, uh, the main ones, I think the main advantages that we have is the additional compute that's available on this, um, on this aircraft on board. So we can see that when we click into the AI capabilities. So, the, uh, so let's turn on the AI and you'll see that now it'll start detecting objects. So we'll see vehicles, we'll get a green pin on top of these. And if we jump into the map, 
we can actually see where all the vehicles are placed. You can notice the green pins. If we tap on a pin, it'll actually provide us the information. So you can see that vehicle's moving, so it's hard to track. But if we go to a stationary one, it gives us the GPS positions of that vehicle. Yeah, wow. um, all of this can then be pushed into Flight Hub 2 or distributed through the Cloud API. So really giving us that connected command center. Um, this is very useful when we're tracking things such as boats, people, um, or really any other assets. Very powerful for emergency response. Um, I think one of the other key things is how uh, that it uses the wide camera. So even if you're in the zoom lens and you're looking at a target, it's still using the wide camera and detecting all those objects in real time and placing them. So it's leveraging all the lenses in the real time to give you as much information as possible. Well, wow, that's gonna be quite useful, especially for the commercial aspect. And what else have we got here? So, yeah, so the laser rangefinder has gotten huge improvement. Uh, previously, we could just get the distance and position on ground of the laser rangefinder. One of the really nice new features, so this is great for positioning where the footage is, really getting context of where you're actually looking. But now what we can do, so if we jump into the draw 2D area, so, yep. So now you can use the C1 button on the back. And if you plot that and then move the gimbal around, you can see that we can actually start drawing lines and areas and polygons. So we can push this back into something like Esri or push this into um, Flight Hub 2 or anything using the Cloud API. So very powerful for, say, dictating areas that have already been searched, defining areas or grounds that are fire, a fire boundary, or even access routes. So this really now is providing us real-time geospatial information and creation of those layers. The AR, the AR overlay as well on this thing is super powerful to see what you're looking at. Um, yeah, we also have the ability to drop pins using the LiDAR, uh, using the laser rangefinder. That's nice, so when we go into this, it's plotting where you've actually looked the direction so if you're doing like search and rescue, you have the ability to push that out so you know what the coverage was. So if you're focusing on a subject, that'll actually show you the direction of where the subject went and uh, exactly where it's going. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal, look at that. So go back into the camera. I think if you hit, yes, L3. So now we can drop the pins on the ground. So you see we're now generating annotations for locations. All of these map assets can be pushed out as well as standard GeoJSONs or any other format into a GIS platform. So a really powerful tool for creating that geospatial information. You can make the drone go to these locations as well, so you can set like, your, that'll reset your home to those positions. All right, sweet. So we've covered the AI and the rainfinder, mm -hmm. uh, observed view. So that's what we spoke about, so that's done. So that's pretty much the annotations yep. done. So we can also, we also have a nice feature which is fly to. So uh, this as well as cruise is an ability for you to effectively have to use less manual control, but still get the aircraft to go to a location. So if we're up above the, um, the, any of the structures here, what we can do is uh, let's use a fly to and get it to fly out. So if there's a specific area that you would like to go in and get the drone to do that for you, you can just drop an annotation just like that on the map. You can actually confirm the coordinates on the map itself. Then we need to enable fly to, and then we need to press the C2 button, fly to destination point. The aircraft will then make its way over to that point that you've set previously. Obviously we're getting all the nice AR overlay displaying. Obviously we're getting all the nice AR overlay displaying what the route's going to be, what the heading, all of these things to really give the pilot confidence that the aircraft's going to do what it's been commanded to. Um, once it gets to that point, it'll just sit there hovering. And if you have a look on the bottom right, you can see that the uh, other cameras are now detected it's going down and descending, so it's now showing you a fixed view as a reference. So if you select if you select a pinpoint or an animation, which we'll do now, like that, and then you decide to look away and continue on. If you want to go back to that, you can specifically just press face, and then I'll bring you exactly back to that, and it will bring that camera to where you've originally posted. Yeah, that's an awesome feature to be able to keep maneuvering the aircraft and then keep eyes on target. Absolutely, very quickly. absolutely. Uh, this is just going back to that AI again. You can see that it's identified the five vehicles in the frame, but it can also identify the little arrows, which are human. So. Um, I believe it also works with certain animals and objects. And, and boats as yep, well. Yep. So at least it identifies it. So instead of you having to zoom in, you can just select that just like so. And now we're now uh, focused on a vehicle. And if I press us, there you go. So now it's focused on us. So we'll, we'll get Key in to, um, to go for a walk just to show you. So I'm no longer in control of the aircraft. It's just hovering and it's keeping focus of the subject, which is Key in and it will follow him. As he goes further away, it'll actually continue to zoom or zoom out, depending on how far he is from the aircraft. 
This is really good for whether it be search and rescue or if you'd like to identify targets from a, lower, from a further distance. And you can see that zoom is cycling in and out, making sure that he stays perfectly in frame. So right now we can see a few vehicles moving around. We are currently zoomed all the way out. So if I just select a vehicle as such, so you can see a vehicle is now crossing by. So if we just click that vehicle, it's now gonna focus on that vehicle. So if you look at the zoom very closely, it is very steadily zooming in to make sure it's perfectly in focus. As they get further and further away, it'll automatically zoom and keep that subject perfectly in frame. And you can also see it's still tracking other vehicles. So if I wanna to decide to click the front vehicle, I can now change while I'm currently tracking which vehicle I would like to track. It does have AI tracking, so if a vehicle is moving behind an obstacle, generally it will try and detect where it is and it will keep panning. If the object goes out of focus for too long, then it will stop and then require you to retrack it or manually find it again. So the last feature now, um, I'd love to ask you questions about is Cruise. What is it? Yeah, so Cruise is another one of those modes that they've implemented for this. It was originally implemented on the Mavics more to give that kind of fixed wing flying yeah. experience. Yeah. But what it's very useful for is, say you're five kilometers out from a specific location, um, or you just need to survey a specific area and stay on track, yeah. what you can do is put the sticks into the configuration, so yeah. set a specific forward speed and even a climb, and then yeah, press wow. the C2 button, lock it into that cruise, and yeah. the aircraft will just maintain that until you stop it. Yeah, awesome. So it makes it very easy for the aircraft to stay on that track, and yeah. then you can just pan the camera, look around, whatever. All right, needed. we'll give that a go. So I'm not going to bring any altitude into this. I'm just going to use horizontal flight. So I'm going to push the stick forward, and it says here C1 to lock speed. So I'll just press C1 now. I've now let go of the sticks, and there you go. It's now remaining that constant cruise, and it's also, it knows exactly how much stick input I provided, and it's locking that in. So now I'm just going to bring the stick up. You can see my altitude is climbing. I'm going to press C1, lock speed. So now it is ascending. I have now released the sticks and there you go. And then I can press X and I'm back out of that again. So that's cool that it doesn't just do horizontal, but it also does your vertical too. Yeah, and you can do it both. So you can be climbing for, you can be going forward and slowly climbing up as well. So you can do a combination of those. All right, let's try that. So I'm going to descend and go forward as if I'm coming back home. C1, I've let go of the sticks. And there you go, we're coming to a slow descent with a bit of horizontal input. And I'll get out of that, and we're back into hover. Just hit the RTH, you'll see uh, precision landing now has okay. also been enhanced, so. Beautiful, so I'm gonna hold down that. the RTH. We have set out. We get the overlay with the AR menu as expected, showing us exactly what the aircraft's gonna do. So because I've set the out return to home altitude at 60, it is actually moving towards us, but also ascending. And then once, just to make sure that we make that clearance, and then it will bring itself down again. Yeah, look at that. So one of the key things as well is to remember with DJI, if you're within 20 meters, there's a combination of different RTH modes. So it can do like the smart RTH. Um, it doesn't always have to go up to the RTH altitude if you're within that zone as well. Oh, okay, there you so, go. Um, yeah, just always, it's good to play around how yeah, the aircraft's yeah. gonna respond when you're closer, those It's getting kind of smarter, things. isn't it? Yeah. And also the enhanced visual sensors make it a lot better for it to come back and um, be able to take off without having to rely on high GPS. Absolutely, uh, and accuracy. you can see it too, it's yeah. just locked on. So the great thing about the Matrice 4T is the fact that you can pull the battery out and put it back in. You should be back in the air within 15 seconds, which is gonna minimize your time with jobs. Turn that back on. So let's see. What it's going to do is use a combination of the cameras to establish its position and know where its RTH location is, as well as trying to get a GPS fix in that time. So right now, initializing. All right, we can actually take off. So what I'm going to do is let's take off. Prop spinning, taking off. So you can see how quickly that was to get back in the air. Big difference. Massive difference. Right, so what we're going to do now is do a comparison test between uh, the M30T and the Matrice 4T here. Uh, we're going to punch it up to 100 metres and then we're going to look at some targets. We're going to use a laser rangefinder to confirm we're looking at the same areas and just see what the quality is like. So uh, let me get in the air first and then I'll get Bryce to go in. Beautiful. So I'll go to 100 metres, I'll stick over to the left and you stick over on the right from here. And we'll Done. just stay in that Beautiful. position. Sweet. Cool, going up. All right, we're at 14X. Cool, yep. so we got pretty zoomed in. Cool, let's jump in a little bit more, 28. So you, can, you should be able to hit this one and it'll jump to the same, hit That's this right. one. And it'll just jump to the same amount. What do you got, 28, cool. Let's go into the next one, 56. I've got 40. Yeah, can you go to another one? 
Yeah, 80. All right. So we've got, let's go to, I'll go to 80 now. You can see we're starting to get, lose a little bit of quality there. What I might do is um, look at the, look at the vehicles over here. So looking at yep. the cars. Yep. Just going down. Yep. Yep. Just looking at the cars there. So we're at 80 here. On the yep. 80 so also. I think yours is definitely, uh, definitely better resolution there. Yep. yep. But um, why don't we go in a little bit more? So what's your max? I'm at 112 now. I'm at 200. So I can still see people walking around, but no detections there. Yeah, so it definitely, definitely gets a bit, uh, you definitely lose a bit of resolution. We are doing digital zoom now. We've lost obviously optical, um, but you can still make out objects. Uh, definitely a bit closer, but in honesty, it's not that big of a difference. Not, if I go back to even, even 160. Yeah. It's pretty similar. I think it yeah. is better on the H30T, yeah, but it is. Um, but I mean, zoom. it's the comparison isn't as big as yeah. I thought it would be, to be honest with you. So why don't we zoom back out and look at something else that's a little bit closer and see how it actually compares in that closer range. All right. What are you on? So what are you on? I'm on 20. So we're at 20 here. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's go in a little bit more, maybe like 40. So we're there, it's looking pretty good. Yep. Stabilizing on that. Yep. As we start to go in a bit more, we're gonna lose a bit of quality on that, but still not too bad. Probably not good enough to inspect like pins and things like that, but on the M30, you can see that's a little bit better. Which you'd never really be inspecting from, from this distance, distance anyway, no. so I mean. And I'm just gonna go into 200. So that's 200, that's me fully zoomed in right now. On that insulator there? Yep, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, so you can see mine's blowing out. There's a lot of yeah, noise yeah. in the sensor. Yeah, so you're, getting much, yeah. you're getting better yeah, there. Absolutely. All right, so I'm completely zoomed out. So are you. So we're looking at the same subject, obviously different angles, but um, we're only four meters from each other in height. So that's a really good example. So we'll go FCC. So that'll do the calibration. Yep. Yeah, interesting how this is so much darker yeah, it is, isn't on it? this. It is. This has this um, high res as well. I'm not sure about it. So I just hit the mode button. Oh, mode. Loading. Oh, it's just wigged out. Yeah, I must not have high res. Wow. That's a noticeable difference, isn't it? Yeah, so like for the lines, you're getting a lot Absolutely. more detail. And you're the... zoomed out too. Yeah, so you can see the difference here with standard high gain. Yep. We lose all the detail of lines, things like that. But as soon as we go into the high res, using something similar to the uh, the Fleur MCX, yeah, 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 where yeah. it uh, overlays the RGB, yep. and then brings a contrast out from that. But you can see how easily these people are popping here yeah, as well. Yeah, that's phenomenal. So uh, we've gone over pretty much a lot of the, the, the new features of the new Matrice 4T and uh, what it has to offer. And um, yeah, thanks for your time today, Cam. No worries, mate. Yeah, it was great and to when, put it out. When, uh, when can we buy these? When are they available? Yeah, so they're available for order now. So you can contact us at Flight Technologies, the T uh, DJI Tier 1. Uh, they'll be shipped out probably in two weeks. They'll be available. So uh, reach out. We'll get you a good package and uh, get you up in the air. Beautiful. Thanks Sounds good, time, mate. Cheers. Bye.